This conference will now be recorded. Very good. Okay, we'll call to order the meeting of the Stratford Zoning Commission at 7 p.m. Uh, we have all uh, five regular members in attendance. Um, and this is being per this meeting is being held pursuant to the governor's executive orders. Um, application number one is going to be 1701 Stratford Avenue petition of Posse Motor Works LLC seeking a site plan review and approval of location to establish a general repairs license in a CA slash RM1 zone. And is the petitioner present? I see he is actually. Mr. Bassi. Uh, yes. I'm okay. Sorry. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Okay, why don't you walk us through your proposal? Um, all right. Um, I just want to start off by thanking everybody for taking the time tonight. Um, this is my first appearance in, uh, in any type of planning and zoning meeting, so I appreciate uh, any patience as I may fumble through it a bit. Um, it's also my first appearance on a Zoom meeting, so uh, the big night for me. Um, <laughs> but nonetheless, thank you guys for being here. Um, I'll also be representing um, William Pepe, my, my partner and colleague, in regards to his application um, for 24 Lines Place, the, the used car license. Um, and so uh, as I describe the, the, the building and the plans, I, I may go back and forth um, with how they'll be working together. Um, so if there's any confusion on that, you can just, just stop me and, and I'll, I can answer any questions um, in regards to both um, addresses um, individually. Um, but, but anyway, um, my name is James Rapazzi and uh, uh, I reside in Shelton, Connecticut. I, uh, I've worked at the Porsche dealership in uh, Fairfield for the last 13 years. Um, I special, special, specialize in one specific model of Porsche, and um, my application tonight is uh, to uh, is for a general repairs license at 1701 Stratford Avenue. Um, what I would, would be doing there is uh, just low volume general repairs on uh, that that one specific model of car I, I specialize in. Um, but like I mentioned, uh, it's it's a very boutique car. Um, probably looking at something like five or six cars a month, um, you know, on the high end. Um, in, in regards to the facility itself, um, during operations, all cars will be inside, no doors will be open, no excessive noise, no, no smells, um, all pretty gen general uh, items. Um, I, I actually do a lot of business with some of the surrounding um, businesses in that area, um, like the Automotive uh, Restorations Inc. Uh, facility on Lupus Drive. Um, there's a machine shop I use on, on Rachel Drive. Um, and uh, I, I, think, I think the idea of, of the, the business I'm, I'll be operating could probably be compared to uh, the, um, the, the facility Automotive Concepts, which is right down the street. How they specialize in, in you know higher end um, you know low volume and um, and, uh, and and so my colleagues so I'll be doing all the, the general repairs out of the 1701 address and uh, my colleague specializes in, in the auto sales side of the business and mm -hmm. so um, the building is conveniently um, segregated already um, about, about 10 years ago there was a, a um, 1600 square foot addition put on the back of the original brick building. Um, mm -hmm. and it never removed any of the segregating walls. So, so it's physically pretty much two buildings touching themselves already. So he, he's, he's going to be operating a used car, um, you know, buying and selling out, out of that smaller portion. And I'll be doing my repairs um, in, the, in the larger portion. And uh, the, the two of us just, we've always worked together and complemented, um, you know, e each other and, and what we specialize in. And so we're just going to be moving into to one roof. Okay. <clears throat> um, questions for the gentleman? Question from uh, Commissioner Bacola. Mr. Bacola, proceed, sir. Um, on the used car lot, how many cars are you looking to be 
uh, put out there at one time. Um, there, there would be no cars uh, exterior of the building at any time. All, all, all cars for sale would be uh, indoors. Outside, okay, thank you. No, no problem. Outside uh, of of clients coming, uh, coming in, uh, or you know, to to either inspect a car for service work or inspect a car for purchase, um, you know, no cars for sale or anything being advertised outside. Um, in regards to that, one step further, any any signage. Um, outside of the building would would pretty much just be the the absolute minimum that that the Department of Transportation would require, like like hours of operation and you know obviously a name, um, but but no sort of sales or or pricing or you know anything anything of that nature. Okay, very good. Right, quick Chief, um, Mr. Henrik and then Mr. Francis. Just uh, Jay, you typically have a, a list of, of requirements, uh, you know, town town requirements for these. Have, have they been made accessible to the applicant, and and are you aware of them, Mr. Rapisi? Just we have like standard stipulations for. Uh, I'm guessing they pertain. I don't know if they're two separate sets: one for the one for the auto repair, one for the car dealership. Um, so this is Jay Habansky. I'll, I'll answer that first. Uh, so we have one standard set of uh, motor vehicle conditions of approval. Uh, I made sure to attach those uh, for the applicant's review uh, to my staff comments, and I'll let the applicant respond to whether or not he's had an opportunity to to take a peek. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you, Jay. Uh, yes, I did receive them um, with my notes, and um, yeah, none of those will be any problem at all. Um, you know, I'll be well within any of those regulations while while operating business. Okay. All right, that's all I had. Okay, Mr. Francis. Yeah, well, that was kind of part of my question. Um, but to so basically, just to get a, a full aspect of what you're trying to do there. So the front part of that building is going to be like a showroom inside, and then the back, the rear part of it is going to be where the automotive repairs are being done. Uh, yeah, yes, that's correct. I, it, it'll, it's actually switched. The original building is up front, so the so the repairs will be out front, and then the the, the sales will be out back. But but essentially, yeah. Okay. Also, oh, all right. So vice versa. Yeah, that's all. And uh, going in regards to some of the standards that uh, Jay was just mentioning, I see there was one where uh, you're going to do car washing and stuff of the cars, of course, right? um not, not so much car washing um uh, there'll be some some level of, of detail work and uh, you know cleaning of the cars but you know nothing to be said of actual uh you know car washing services of any of any type just just you know cleaning and for, for photos to be taken for sales or cleaning after a service um a lot of that i may even um rely on the car wash across the street for just because, you know, like I said, it's going to be a small operation of only a handful of guys. There won't be, you know, any, any sort of a volume of car washes. I just seen that there was a, a standard where you had to have an oil water separator install, installed in there. So, AJ, so is that a requirement regardless? Or if he's going to wash cars? I mean, is exactly. That an optional standard? So this is Jay Habansky. Um, some of not all of these conditions will apply to every motor vehicle use so that one would apply to if there were um if they were for a car wash by state uh state law uh, it's required to have a, a grit oil and water separator so it doesn't sound like the applicant is going to be uh running a a, a a car wash to the to the effect where they would um, you know, be sudsing and, and needing to collect all the oil and stuff off of the car that you typically would get on the, uh, while traveling on the road that a regular, you know, car wash would need. So no, I mean, if they're not washing cars there, like a, like a typical car wash that you and I would all, would all know, uh, then that, that condition would not apply. And, and some of these conditions might not apply. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just a question uh, for your, uh, in the planning and zoning comments, there was some <clears throat> references to the facade of the building. 
And, uh, you know, as you're aware that in that neighborhood, we want to keep things nice for our, uh, two roads and you got pizza co next to you. So that it is frequented by people, by townspeople. Uh, are there any plans to make any changes to, um, or, uh, improvements to the facade as it is right now? Um, outside of just maintaining the, the, the current, you know, look of the building and, and the landscaping around it, um, mm -hmm. you know, any sort of uh, modifications to the building would, would only be would only be made to reflect and complement the buildings around it. Um, you know, a, a large por portion of why I wanted to move to that area is exactly for those reasons. The you know the pizza mm -hmm. restaurant uh, right right next door, the, the the brewery across the street, and then like I said, the other buildings uh, down the road. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the the maintaining the character of the neighborhood in that building is uh, is, is just as important to me as as I'd imagine it would be to you, to you guys. Yeah. So if there's anything that, as it's written in, in the comments, if anything is is rotting in the facade, uh, this is rotting board and batten in the front of the building, or anything that's peeling, uh, we would appreciate it if that could be uh, maintained just so that it would it is appealing to look at. <laughs> no, no, I I, I agree and. Uh, that 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 is uh, that's part of the plan. Um, shortly after um, you know the, the purchasing the building, it's just to you know return it back to its original brick character. Um, mm -hmm. I, I believe 20 years or so, it was um, a different style to have uh, you know the front fascia of the building uh, have that brick and border you know the, the, the wood front fascia, and, mm -hmm. uh, and as it's deteriorated over time, it's no you know no longer pleasant to look at. So. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely interested in removing that wood, you know, as soon as I can, and any other, um, you know, uh, uh, any other uh, uh, requests, I've got no problem with. Okay, very good. Uh, Mr. Vigliotti, do you have any questions? I think we haven't heard yeah, from you um, yet. Uh, Jim Vigliotti, um, I, I, first question, if you, are you going to do oil changes and things like that uh, when you do, you provide your service? Uh, yeah, yeah. At time of service, there are uh, fluids being changed. And what happens to the, uh, you know, the waste fluid? Um, so, so part of the DOT um, application um, is a, a, a contract with a company that provides a waste oil tank for all of that stuff to be collected in, and also um, um, contracts, um, including uh, them them coming in on a you know a, a monthly basis to to clean out that tank and uh, main, main <clears throat> that equipment. And you said that happens once a month? Um, I, I believe it's up to their discretion um, because the tanks that are required are, uh, you know, th it's a fairly good size for the low volume that I would, uh, I'd be doing. Uh, I, I would assume like a normal dealership would probably need it about once a month. Um, I, I would probably need it less frequently, but um, it's, it's all part of their, um, uh, you know, they're much more familiar with the laws and regulations of all that, and and to sign the contract, whether it be, um, you know, one month or or six weeks, um, you know, they, they would come in to do their job anyway. You know, that that that's an expense that I I'll have to uh, uh, you know acquire. And then what about consumable parts like filters and 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 gaskets and things like that? When uh, if you have to replace those, does that go in a dumpster? Uh, yeah, anything without any uh, hazardous um, um, chemicals or materials um, can just be d disposed of, you know, in, in a normal uh, dumpster. And then um, all the all the oil filters or anything like that that's saturated by those chemicals w would also be removed by. That. <coughs> I'm sorry, be removed by that that same company that's in, in, in control of the waste waste oil disposal. And and you'll have a contract with a dumpster to remove a, a company to come and. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so then uh, looking at the floor plan, um, I guess the way it's oriented, the way I'm looking at it, you have uh, five cars lined up. So that would be your, um, that would be the repair facility or the service bay. And then uh, the, the little four cars, that's the showroom? The oh, sales room? Yeah, that's correct. All right, great. Yeah, thank you. That's it for me for now. Thanks. Okay. Any further questions from members? Ms. Jenner. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Fredette had, had made a comment. Um, just, it, it, are you allowed to use the same building with two different addresses with the motor vehicles department, or um, is that is that allowed? 
Uh, uh, yes, as, as long as the the both portions of the building satisfy their requirements, um, there's no problem with them being under one roof. Okay, so so the motor vehicle department or or the authority has no issues with the the way it's set up. No, no, not at all. As long, like I said, as long as we fulfill their requirements, meaning um, you know separate entrance, separate overhead door, an office, enough space to have cars to be seen and um and a lift so as long as as long as all those requirements could fit in that space it um it, it, it you could have you could have multiple under under one roof okay all right okay last chance any questions yeah i have a couple more now i did Mr. see Pat. some uh so in one of the standard documentation that we received um the dumpster is going to be located where and how would you cover that so it's not like an eyesore if it's towards the front or the back? So it, it currently is, uh, there, the way they have it set up currently is they have almost like uh, um, transport containers attached to the building. Um, and they're, they're going to be removing those as they move out. Um, so they, they, they're, there currently isn't a dumpster. Um, at the location, but what what I'll be doing is uh, in that southeast corner of the of the property, um, I'll be fencing in just a, a single small uh, uh, dumpster. Again, um, you know, the, the smallest I can have that will that will fulfill the DOT needs, um, and that could be fully enclosed with with the top on it, um, you know, if, if needed. And is, is there a, the second part of my question, is there a certain kind of exhaust system that you have to use if, you know, when you start the car just to make sure it's running right when you're doing repairs, is there a standard of certain kind of exhaust system that needs to be installed into the building? Um, not not by state law. That's more of a, a an OSHA um, control issue. Um, and and considering what they recommend for 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 a building this size and, and the amount of volume that i'll be doing um it, it's not going to be necessary okay okay anything uh any further questions for members if not, we'll take a motion to close this uh, this application. A motion. Motion closed by Mr. Francis. Is there a second? Second. Second. I think that's Mr. Gliotti. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. no. Carries unanimously. Next one, and this is probably going to be fairly straightforward, but we'll call it separately anyway. 24 lines place petition of Rosa Linnea LLC seeking a site plan review and approval of location to establish a used car dealer license in a CA slash RM1 zone. So I guess you're speaking to that one as well, Mr. Rapassi? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, and I can see that the, I was looking at the, the, you're right, the two buildings look like they are practically glued together and the, uh, the site plans that we had, uh, you know, indicate how they are connected. Um, so I guess, let me just take a look at the staff comments here. If there was anything different, I think they're pretty much the exactly the same. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, Jay Habansky. Yeah. Uh, the the changes are are material. Really, it's the the separate licenses and the separate addresses. All the comments I have are the same. Thank you. Okay. So last chance. Any further questions? Otherwise, we'll just take a quick motion to close this one out too. Okay. Uh, can we do the same thing, Mr. Francis? Can we make a motion to close, please? Yeah, I'll make a motion to close. Okay. Second? Mr. Vigliotti, second. Mr. Vigliotti. Okay. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 No. Carries unanimously. And we are out of our public hearing at uh, 720. And just give me one second to reset here, and we'll move right into our administrative session. Okay. All right, we'll call the administrative session to order at uh, 7.20 p.m. as well. Uh, Mr. Henrik, why don't we take uh, both of those together off the table? So, can you make a motion, please? Uh, 
Chairman, I make a motion to take 1701 Stratford Ave and 24 Lions Place off the table. Okay, motion by Mr. Hendrick to take take uh, 1701 Stratford and 24 Lions off the off the table. Uh, can I have a second, please? Second, Mr. Vicola. Second, Mr. Vicola. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Okay, your pleasure, commissioners. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve 1701 Stratford Ave. Petition of Rapasi Motor Works, LLC, seeking a site plan review and approval of location to establish a general repairs license in the CARM1 zone. Okay. A motion by Mr. Henrik to approve. Is there a second? Second, second Mr. Vicola. Second, Mr. Vicola. Okay, discussion. I would make that motion to include all the standard uh, motor vehicle stipulations. Okay. Make notes. Okay, so the motion will include all standard stipulations. Anything else, Mr. Henrik, while we, we got that? Um, do we want to include in the, the repairs to the front, or we just take it under, under assumption that it'll be done? I have, um, if, if, no. if, we're talking, if we're talking about commercial, does the architectural review board get involved in something like this in terms of the, you know, because of that, you know, where it is in the neighborhood and the street it's on and, and, and all the surrounding businesses. Mr. Habansky, I'll let you answer that question. Jay Habansky here. Uh, so we had this discussion with the applicant and, um, you know, the applicant expressed interest in improving the facade. Uh, however, I, I think just financially they weren't prepared to make those um, make those changes up front. Uh, therefore, they were not required to go to the Architectural Review Board if there were facade improvements that were being proposed with this application. Uh, they would have they would have gone to the Architectural Review Board prior. Um, so that's that's a part of the reason why I, I felt my staff comments uh, paid a bit more attention to um, just some of the facade improvements if the Commission decided that they wanted to entertain any of those. I think what we could probably do is let's mitigate anything that is that is rotting or in disrepair. Um, maybe not even necessarily say improve, but anything that needs attention, um, if we can make that as a condition, I think that would that would take care of the immediate issue. And then if there's anything that you know later on that's contemplated as a more a larger scale revision of it, um, we could take care. They can take care of that with the ARB. Would that make sense? Sure. So do you want me to make another motion or, uh, or do you want to just include, include that into mine? Let's just make, let me, I didn't really get through your whole thing, Mike. So why don't you just make one, one with those two stipulations, the standards and then the, uh, uh, the standard steps and then um, um, remove any uh, rotten, damaged or uh, peeling paint, peeling paint, anything that is in disrepair in the facade. Okay, so I, I would withdraw my original motion and make a new motion mm -hmm. for approval. The approvals would include the standard motor vehicle stipulations and uh, the repairs to the front facade of the building, whether it be rotten boards or um, dilapidated paint to be uh, completed. Okay, is there a second? I second. Mr. Francis. Uh, further discussion? Uh, Mr. Pomansky, I thought I saw your hand go up. No? All set, thank you. Okay. Uh, just so, as far as debate, um, I this looks fairly straightforward. Looks like this is continuing a type of use that is quite common uh, in that area. Um, I think with uh, giving the, the buildings uh, some additional care, it can continue to operate within the area, as I mentioned in my comments earlier during the meeting that, um, you know, that is frequented by people from town because of the restaurants, the car wash and the brewery um, in that neighborhood. So I think it looks like it would be a, a complimentary addition to it. So I would, in, I would recommend approval. Um, any other comments from members? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mike yep. Henrik, I would agree to you um, based on, it sounds like that the uh, style of car and, and the type of business would, <laughs> almost require a nicer um, nicer facade, a nicer look to the building to attract the type of clientele. I think he's going to be looking to 
a track. So I think it would be only in his best interest to, to make those improvements. And it seems to be a good fit. It's a low impact on, on the area. Um, there's no big traffic. So um, it, it, it seems like they'll, uh, they'll be going. And to Mr. Francis' point, I think you might probably have to go to, uh, you know, through the whole process with the building department and, and uh, the fire fire marshals if, if they needed some type of a fire uh, fan system or whatever, whatever it might be. So um i would i would make a i would agree with you that it, it seems to be good fit and i would be in favor of it okay other comments or debate from members uh i just think it's a good fit for the empty space you know i think it's a a, a really good use of the space that we have that there that's that's vacant and empty so um yeah i'm i'm, I'm excited to have more uh use of the uh empty properties that are there in, in the district. Okay. Last chance, any other comments? If not? Oh uh, yeah, and I also agree. Oh, I think sure. it'll be a comment to the area. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And um and basically that area is, you know, the VIPs right there which deals with cars. I mean it's two roads is right across the street, Pizza Co's right there. Um so I think it'll be a benefit to have somebody in in that uh, complex doing something positive so uh, mm -hmm. i think it's a it's a good good idea and i agree very good anybody else okay if not all in favor say aye 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 aye, aye. aye. opposed no carries unanimously mr chairman yes mr henrick Make a motion to approve 24 lines place petition of Rosa Linea LLC seeking a site plan review and approval of location established used car dealership dealer license in a CARM1 zone. Uh, I would make my motion to approve the uh, to include the, the standard motor vehicle stipulations. And, mm -hmm. and since it is a part of the building um, uh, of 1701, to include the uh, repairs to the front facade. Uh, equivalent to those of, of the last um, application. Okay, a motion by Mr. Henrik to approve 24 lines place with the standard motor vehicle stipulations and the stipulated uh, um, repairs to anything that was damaged or rotten in the facade um, as previously uh, done with 1701. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Nicola. Second by Mr. Vicola. Jumped you. <laughs> uh, okay. Any discussion? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mike Henrik, as, as with the with the previous application, it, it's since it's in basically within the same building, part of an equal piece of it. Uh, I would say for all the same reasons that that uh, we approved the last, that this would fit it, fit under and. and uh, Again, I was going to kind of joke around and say it would be crazy to approve it to see if I could get a, a reaction out of Mr. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> you seem um, very intent right now. I can see that. <laughs> I, I think again, it's it's it, it all. I think it'll all work well. And it'll be yeah. harmonious in the area. So it'd be kind of silly to approve half the building and not the other one. I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it makes sense. So uh, well, I'll be voting yes on this one. Any further discussion, members? Or you can just say ditto, ditto, you know, that work. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no, carries unanimously. You're all set, sir. Have a good evening. Congratulations. Have a good evening. Yeah. Best of luck Thank to you, too. Thank you, yeah. guys. I, I appreciate everything. And so in re just one quick question before I jump sure. off. In regards to those... Um, uh, improvements on the facade. Um, how, how does that so that I need to do them before it's approved, or it's just approved and then that's expected of me uh, right after? It's approved and that's part of the condition of approval. So just you know, see to it that anything that is you know broken, dilapidated, broken, rotten, peeling is done, and that's part of the condition of approval. Okay. All right. Thank you. That, that won't be a problem. I really appreciate everything, guys. And. Uh, uh, if you're ever in the area, I hope you hope you stop by. I need uh, uh, two or three months to get to get the building up and operating, um, and shortly after that, it should be a, a pretty interesting place to come in and uh, um, walk around and check out some some cool cars. We well, I'm here, so I'll do that. 
I look forward to seeing you guys and, and you lady. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Have a good night. You too. Bye bye. Okay, moving Mr. ahead in the agenda. Approval of the Mr. minutes Chairman. of the March twenty. You got it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, approval of the minutes of the March 24th, 2021 meeting. Uh, can I have a motion to approve? I have a motion to approve. By Mr. Francis. Uh, second by Mr. Henrik. I heard both of you guys together. Uh, any corrections, changes, revisions, anything out of place? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. Okay, uh, campsite plan review. Anything, Jay? No. Very good. Uh, zoning enforcement. Do we have any complaints from any members? Any issues that we should address? I guess not. I have, I have one question. Um, sure thing. Go ahead. So like Shakespeare Market, there are people who go there and they sell baked goods and they mm -hmm. have things on their cookies saying that they're from a cottage kitchen. Is, uh, is that a thing? Like, I mean, I don't know, like if you're if you're producing food and selling it, do you, do you need any kind of health inspection or, I mean, I certainly don't want to confront the person there or, you know, but I'm just, I you know, it was just something I, I thought of and I don't know what the answer, I don't know how that falls. Is that a self definition, mm -hmm. calling themselves a cottage kitchen or is that like a thing? Mr. Bansky, I'll yield to you because I'm not sure myself. Jay Hibansky, yes, that, it, that is a thing. Um, so I believe it was a year ago, the, the state of Connecticut has basically allowed for uh, cottage kitchen licenses where to allow for, I mean, they call it artisanal manufacturing. You know, if I wanted to start a small cookie business out of my home, um, I would get approval from the uh the local health department you know there's no selling out of the home it's done in things like farmers markets and um you know there's no retail allowed and um with once the health health department approves they can go and get their cottage food license with the state of connecticut so yep that's a thing hmm. and, and and so with that with the uh, uh, health department requirements they would be different than a commercial kitchen or, or something like that and i'm not sure to be totally honest um i'm not sure what the requirements are i know that basically as long as it's in a i believe a a one family home um it's it's basically permitted as of right and um you know the the local zoning departments don't have much say in it i think if you start expanding to a commercial kitchen and it, you're, you know, getting shipments to the house, and there, there's a there's a list of criteria that basically make it uh, really for only mom and pop type type, um, you know, food businesses. I know there's a there's a few in town. Another one they make uh, uh, dog treats. Uh, I can't remember what the other one. Maybe pickles. So that's as much as I know about it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, the uh, the Shakespeare Market. That's if you haven't seen that, that's quite a quite an operation they have down there. And uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on that. If it, if it's get, if it gets much bigger, I don't know how much if that's going to cause any issues. But I mean, it seems like it's well run right now. But I know that there's a lot of a lot of cars and a lot of people there. So hopefully things keep working very smoothly. And my and kudos go up to um the volunteers or staff or police everybody that keeps it orderly so i was down there a few weeks ago so it was quite an interesting thing to see okay um any accessory apartment applications jay no no and while we're on that just a heads up um that we're, we're waiting to see thank you all again for um your support of the resolution on local zoning and one issue that and the um uh the housing plan one issue that was in there actually was dealing with with accessory apartments and just as an fyi um we may actually take up uh, take a look at some of our accessory regulations we've uh, actually the town planner had sent me to review a couple uh regulations that some of our neighboring towns have uh, I have nothing for you right now, but uh, we may 
assuming that the plan gets adopted, uh, we may actually take a look at some of, uh, take a hard look at some of our regulations and see if, if they're working, if they need any uh, improvements, uh, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, during the summer when things get a little, typically get a little slow and we have a little downtime to do some work. So just an FYI on that. Okay, any sediment or erosion control? No, nothing this month. And anything from our friends at the Planning Commission? No updates. No updates, good. Okay, item eight, we have we actually have another item to talk about. Um, uh, Jay and I had a conversation this morning uh, regarding the governor's executive order regarding remote meetings is due to expire next month. Uh, so Jay, I'm going to turn it over to you and you can walk us through it and um, we're going to need to understand what commissioner's preferences are for how we're going to move forward come next month. So Jay. Okay, thank you, Jay Habansky. So um, last year the, the governor uh, made a series of executive orders that, that allowed us to uh, have meetings in, in this, these virtual formats and change the way that we were advertising uh, by posting things on the on the website, including our agendas and notices, uh, as well as applications and staff comments. Um, during that time, um, during that time, we, we changed a lot of the way that we did things in the office. You know, typically we were, um, you know, when an application came in for uh, let's say this Lions Place in 1701 Stratford Avenue. That gentleman would have had to made uh, 13 sets of his application, uh, 13 sets of his survey and floor plans and um, supporting documentation. And uh, I mean, I've seen some of the bills that these folks had, and you know, they can be anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars. Those those big plans, those are expensive. Um, and so it, on, as, uh, Chris mentioned on May 20th, the executive orders are set to expire. Uh, I, I don't know if there's any intention of extending, uh, our, the executive order to allow meetings like this to happen or the way we advertise or how we're posting meetings, but um, you know, Chris and I had a conversation and that's, that's another issue. I mean, I think we have to talk about a few things. One is if the executive order does expire, we all have to be, uh, prepared to start coming to meetings and that's as early as next month. And my office is preparing to advertise in the newspaper, um, next month and to have an in-person meeting in council chambers on, I think it's May 26th. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, I, the last executive order was extended uh, at, at the 11th hour and 59th minute. So that may happen again. And, um, you know, I think so one thing you're going to have to think about is what we're going to be doing with these meetings. Is everyone comfortable coming in? Um, can everyone hear me? I'm getting feedback on my, my device. No, you're you loud and clear. Me? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we're asking the Planning Commission this very same question, uh, as well as the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Architectural Review Board, you know, what everybody's comfort level is. And, it, and the, the big thing for me is we want to make sure that we're, we are all do, heading in the same path together. All the boards are either meeting uh, virtually or they're meeting um, uh, at Town Hall. And um, it's just, it, it's too much to coordinate to have different boards doing different things. So I, want, I wanted to make sure that the board, uh, Zoning Commission was at least thinking about that. So se additionally, so as opposed to taking the 13 sets of copies, we now require applicants under COVID to submit one paper copy of their entire application that we keep on file in the Planning and Zoning Office, and then one digital copy on a flash drive that then I take I will upload to the website and you all have been seeing how you're, you know, that's how we've been reviewing applications. Um, and they're not only available to the commission, but they're also available to the general public. Uh, you know, prior to me starting here, uh, I think applications, just the application themselves were sent out to commissioners 
And if you wanted to look at plans, you had to come in to town hall. I didn't love that system. Um, and uh, so we started require I started requiring applicants to, to make full sets of copies for all the commissioners to review. So you, you didn't have to spend your volunteer time coming into town hall and you, you, you just had them delivered to your house. You could review them. We wanted it to be an e as easy as possible for all of you. You know, and, and, you know, Chris and I were talking a little bit about, you know, it would be a shame to waste an opportunity um, to maybe consider some changes and think about, you know, you know, now that we're going back, what, or with the possibility of going back, what do we want to go back to? And, you know, I think some people have really enjoyed uh, the less paper, the less clutter, the bags waiting for them on their front porch, um, you know, carrying it all to town hall, trying to keep it all organized. Um, and, you know, I think some people are used to that and they, and they like having the paper around and looking at the paper at the meeting. And um, it was always a goal of mine to do something similar to this long before the pandemic. One, because I think it's just a terrible waste of paper and ink, and that's awfully expensive cost to pass on to people who are making applications. Um, but, uh, you know, I also think that um, having everything posted online is a really great tool, not only for you, but I think for the general public to understand what is happening. Uh, they can look at everything that you're looking at or that we're looking at. Um, and um, so we just wanted to see what people thought, you know, did people kind of enjoy the way that we were doing things? Do they absolutely hate it? Um, one way or another, we kind of have to make a decision because it's, it's more work for me to put everything up on the website. I'll just say that it's super easy for me to pass the cost on to the applicant and just say, you know, spend a thousand dollars on copies and that's just the easy way to do it. And I don't have to do anything. Um, however, I think, like I said, thinking about thinking about what we want to go back to, I think some of these things are a little bit better and I would be willing to do the extra work if it's something that the commission was interested in me continuing to do. I think it's a better system, but you all are the ones making the decisions as well. And, you know, this, this way just isn't working from you. You know, we, we want to know so that we can have all the boards collectively doing the same thing. I, I just can't do both. It's too much work to, to do that. And, get paper copies and making sure everybody's getting all their paper in and it's just it would be too much to manage so uh, mr chairman with that with that kind of history and background i'll just turn it over to you okay so i guess the first question here is um let's assume for the moment that uh well if the um if the executive order expires is not renewed then remote meetings are not an option i guess we have to be back in town hall um, so, oh, uh, Attorney Sullivan, would you like to chime in? I, I just want to just give you some information. I think one of the reasons there was the last minute extension of this executive order is that the legislature is supposed to be discussing passing, you know, new legislation that would allow, you know, different things. So I realize it's totally chaotic and in flux and people are scheduling meetings like, you know, a month from now. And so you can't just mm -hmm. sort of wake up one day and say, what are we going to do? But I do think that that's sort of in the works. Just as, a, just as an FYI. Okay. Well, let's just say, so let's just say, for example, that they don't. You know, are members willing to come back to town hall and have these meetings? Or would there have to be, have to, because if they're not, then we have to come up with another accommodation, either God help us something outside or something like that. But, you know, um, and then the question is, if we still have the freedom to do it this remote, do you have a preference for that? Do you want to do, you know, if we have the ability to go, you know, to do one or the other, do you want to stay remote for the foreseeable future? And then the third question is uh, the delivery of materials. And, uh, and Jane and I, when we were talking, I was telling them, I, I can't always see what everybody else is doing. But just for example, I have to have two screens on here because um, I'm looking at you guys through uh, my iPad. This is my old uh, Kindle. So I have all the documents that come up here so i can follow along and i know mike likes to take all of his his uh, his paperwork home at the end of the meeting you know and, and keep it in files and so on um but uh, you know everybody has their, their own their own way of their own way of doing it i'm being sarcastic mike <laughs> so those are the three questions that we got to ask so i'll open up to the floor and you guys tell me what what you think mr chairman yes sir. Uh, so i 
I am a strong proponent of real meetings. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I always have been. I, I, I think most of us have been vaccinated, you know, um, whether we had to wear masks or not. I mean, I would I would be in favor of not wearing them, but if we were mandated to wear mm-hmm. a mask, have a real meeting, I'm wearing a mask and going to a real meeting. If they okay. gave me the choice, I'd leave my mask at home. Okay. Um, I, I'm kind of on the same page as you, though, as far as I think it's great information, informationally, if that's a word, but for the public to have access to some of the stuff that we look at. Um, mm-hmm. But but if we meet in person, I don't know that I'll have the ability to, you know, I have, I have a split screen, screen as well, so I'm scanning back and forth between looking at the documents and and. You know, some of them I print up a full page, you know, blueprints and some of those are a little more difficult, which if I had to, I could. But um, I would like to have a copy during some of these meetings. Some of them we don't need, but yeah, I don't know how you distinguish what is and what isn't. But, you know, to, yeah. to help follow along, some of them it is is more helpful to have a paper copy unless unless the towns are going to provide us with, with laptops and we can scroll back and forth. But um, anyway, that's but I would love to have a real meeting. Yeah, I would too. It's been a long time. I miss I miss the council chambers. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Figliotti, since you're next on my screen, any thoughts? I, I'd be in favor of going back to meeting at council chambers. Um, mm-hmm. I think uh, for the time being, if we all wear masks, probably a good idea. Um, and you know, I I think that also I agree that uh, electronic delivery. You know, saves a lot of trees, saves a lot of ink. Um, and then maybe if we have a couple of hard copies available uh, during the meeting session, when the meeting's in session, you know, so we could look at, you know, some of the, the drawings or whatever, I think, you know, that seems like it should be workable. Okay. Oh, yeah. Maybe that would work because I was actually thinking about this after we talked. We probably will, if we went back into the chamber, we'd probably spread out a bit. So, me in the middle, two and two on each wing, as opposed to how we used to sit all the way together, just so that we're spread out a little bit more. And maybe we could have like one set for each side that two members could share. That might be a compromise to get through that too. Uh, Mr. Francis. And you're on mute. There we go. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. I just got dropped for some reason, but I saw yeah. I missed everything you guys were talking about. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I mean, I like uh, Mr. Hendrick said, I mean, I'm kind of a proponent of being in chambers, um, having people come in, but I also feel it's easier and more uh, accessible for the documents and stuff to be online on our website. Um, Mm -hmm. Because as long as we can, I can bring my iPad to to the um, Mm -hmm. the, uh, meetings, I'm fine within within the council, because I'll just reference the the documentation on my iPad. I'm sure we got Wi-Fi. If we don't, we'll make sure we do. Yep. Uh, Mr. Bacola. Yeah, I don't have a problem going back. Um, and I like your idea, you know, maybe spacing us out that way and, and giving us some paperwork on some of the bigger applications that we could review. It would be helpful. So I have no problem. Okay, cool. All right, Jay. Okay, so just a few things. I mean, I would be uh, happy to provide, you know, for for a substantial or complicated application, I'd be happy to make sure that ask the applicant to provide, you know, maybe five. I mean, I would even say for a big application, you know, we just get one for every commissioner. But, Mm -hmm. um, and I would, but I would say that for a majority of our applications, we probably would just keep everything online. But that's, mm-hmm. I mean, you all would need a device. You would have to have a device in order for that to work. I mean, some, you'd have to either have a laptop. The town hall has Wi-Fi. You know, we've got um, a couple hundred people on Wi-Fi every day there, all day. Uh, I, you know, at the time of our meetings, I think it would be if, if everyone had a laptop. Or if, Here's what I would say. If maybe if not everybody had a laptop, I could look into uh, maybe purchasing or uh, getting something for even though know, it's not necessarily in our budget, but find find some money to buy one or two. Um, I could bring an extra device, my extra device. I think uh, the town, uh, our zoning enforcement officer might 
have an extra one, but we would, in order to make it kind of work, everyone would kind of need something to work off of. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I understand that's a lot to ask. So um, I think that's really kind of part of this discussion too. Um, yeah. Yeah, or I mean, if they're up there in advance and if somebody wants to bring it, print it out at home and bring it with them, I mean, that sort of means you have to spend a little time to prep. If there's uh, something you know that's going to be controversial, then obviously we can make sure we allow. I mean, like tonight's meeting, for example, I don't think we would have needed printouts, um, uh, you know, because the, these were fairly straightforward uh, if you had the device to be able to look at them. You know, that's the qualification there. Whereas if, you know, the Christchurch application, clearly we all the commissioners would want their own set of plans to kind of run mm -hmm. through. Oh, that one, yeah. So, so come Monday, who is our zoning enforcement officer? I heard John's that's, retiring. That's me. So what, <laughs> what, No. Well, I didn't I mean, know John was I, retiring. I, I <laughs> He's been, he's been, you know, John's been on vacation using his vacation time for the past two months. So I've been doing my job as well as his job while he's been away. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I will be doing that for the next few weeks until our, we have made an offer and had our offer accepted uh, to a, a new zoning enforcement officer who I believe will be starting in about three weeks. So I got another three weeks to go. <laughs> So, so when I get emails from John, it's actually you. <laughs> no, those were actually coming from him. If you get an email from me, it's, it's from me. Um, he, so he's been in the past uh, past uh, week and a half okay. using he, he. You can't take two weeks vacation or whatever it is. Your last two weeks. So he was on vacation for about two months prior, and uh, he's been in the last week and a half. So. Um, <laughs> he's half day tomorrow, and he's off on Friday. So if you want to talk to him. Tomorrow morning's the time. I will call him. Wish him well. Okay. So Jay, just getting back. So I think we have a general consensus that if we have to come back into the, uh, you know, the executive order is not renewed. Uh, where it looks like we have uh, all five members are willing to, and we'll obviously we'll chat with the alternates. I don't think we have anyone with us tonight. Uh, I think the five regular members are prepared to come back. We'll probably space ourselves out. Probably do masks, especially if we're we have other people in here. Uh, I get my second shot on Sunday, so by the time that meeting comes up, I'll at least be up up to speed there. Um, and for delivery, um, I don't know that we're. I think generally we we like the um, the um, online versions. But I know Mike, you have a concern. Um, we would probably maybe we can figure out a way to just have either a. I don't think we need 13 anymore. Um, we could probably get by at, at a maximum of, you know, one for each member plus your office, obviously, so six. Um, and we'll probably have to wait and see how this all goes out because if members can get them electronically, we can handle that. Uh, or if we need something, if there's something specifically printed out, maybe we can make a, a smaller number, especially with plans, so that maybe they can be shared between members. I mean, whatever, whatever it turns out, we can make work. I mean, and I don't want to say you've got to, you've got to, you know, set up the system just for me. I mean, we're only going to be here till November anyway, so. Uh, January, well, December, January, whatever. Yeah, we, we usually print out meeting the end of the year anyway. We don't yeah. have a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, and that, that sounds, you know, I hear what everyone's saying. I just want to try to make sure that if I can avoid doing both, mm -hmm. um, we can we can avoid doing both. Um, so you know if I can do you know maybe yeah. Well, we'll have to just continue to think about continue to think about how we're going to do it. And if it's honestly if it's too complicated, I, you know I'm proud that we're at least having this discussion, exploring, going going in another direction. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe we have to go back the other way and use all the paper. And, and that just is that's a part of the that's what's going to ha got to happen. So. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd say people continue to think about it and we can we can kind of circle back on it next month. OK, so we have so we're at a little bit of a lurch, though, for the 26th. So that's only six days after. So if they wait to the we have to how how do we do that? <laughs> I mean, we can't so, say we're meeting uh, in town hall, but we can't say we're meeting online because we don't know where we're going to be. Yeah. And, and, and Pat, you're welcome to, to chime in. My thought is 
I am going to advertise in the paper next month as we would have pre-COVID, which is, mm -hmm. um, I think it's 14 days, I can't even remember, it's been so long, 14 or 15 days prior to the hearing and, and um, no less than seven. So we advertise twice for three weeks out, I'm sorry, two weeks out, one week out, and then we have the meeting. We're gonna advertise mm -hmm. like that next month for the zoning commission meeting. Um, and, you know, I'm going to post, I don't think we don't have any large applications. So I think I'm going to keep yeah. the online review of applications the same, at least for next month. Um, and then just kind of see what plays out on the 20th. If that, if okay. everyone's agreeable to that. Okay. Yeah. I think and one then, of the reasons they took the executive orders and they kind of trimmed them down. So they continued some aspects and didn't continue other aspects. And I think they're sort of streamlining it so that the ones that they've kept in, in you know, sort of uh, in executive orders, they can either extend those executive orders again or have the legislation in place to, I, th I think everybody is thinking about how useful it has been to have things online and how, uh, you know, it's actually created some access for both commissioners and for the public, you know, so everybody is thinking like, well, should we do hybrid? You know, what should we do? So I think it's still in flux, but I suppose the thing is, if you schedule it as a virtual meeting and then it turns out that on, you know, May 19th, they say, okay, no more virtual meetings, you can probably just cancel the meeting and then just, you know, reschedule it in, in, in person on another, on another day, you know, as a, as a special, I mean, depending on what you have on, I mean, I don't, if it's, if, if there are things that are critical, um, you know, can certainly think think more about it, but um, you know, my expectation is that is that they they do understand that they're leaving people in a lurch when you're supposed to, you know, at this meeting you would say, oh, and our next meeting is going to be X, you know, and it's going to be remote, and so without or maybe that you can do time, something like, you know, this will be at twenty seven twenty five Main Street, unless. Do an uh, and or and or on, at go to meeting, put both of them on there and whichever one happens to be, you know, yeah, Jay. Well, there's nothing prohibiting us from having an in person meeting. So, I That's mean, we could try to just commit. I mean, maybe we just want to commit to the in person meeting next month mm -hmm. and see how that goes. Or um, we maybe we you know, check back, you know, maybe Chris and I, we just check back in before I finalize the legal notice and the agenda. Yeah, let's do that. Um, let's see what we, we're doing. We, we go from there. changes so fast around here. But that's good to know that we still have the, we have the freedom to actually do that. And then um, if everybody's still comfortable, then regardless of what happens, we can even do it that way. But let's, let's stay in touch on that. And then we get closer to the advertising date, we can make a call. Okay, thanks everybody. Appreciate your, your, your input on that. Uh, any items for goal settings or any other business before the commission? Just, you know, we don't have to get yeah, any deep discussion on it today. It's Mike yeah. Henrik. Um, yep. But if, if sometime, maybe at the next meeting or whatever, we can get a report on the uh, cell, the cell service at, at Town Hall, Cupola, and, and if that's moving anywhere. Jay Hamansky, um yeah, I'll check with the CAO. I believe the the, the inquiry from the, the zoning commission was or is is the town interested in relocating the uh, cellular equipment to the high school is that right yeah and uh i i believe the last communication i got was um let's wait until the building's co'd and so i believe we're co'ing it uh this week it might even happen tomorrow so that'll be a timely um time for me to reach out and just kind of re-engage them so I'll, that's thanks okay well then as stated previously our next meeting is may 26th it looks like we've already canceled the admin session according to this um okay oh yes it is because yes. we have a training going on that night um especially for uh mr francis and um mr Vigliati, since you'll be com continuing um and for any of our alternates or any actually anybody that wants to come uh please uh, make a, avail yourself of that and you have and to send me an email to let me know 
uh, because there's some information that's going to be going out ahead of time to everyone that's attending. So please let me know if you're going to be attending. Thanks. Okay. Very good. With that, I will take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Mike Henrik. I mean, we can stay here all as long as you like. Okay, motion by Mr. Henrik. <laughs> Second, Mr. Big Big Liotti. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Carries unanimously. We're adjourned at 8 p.m. and hopefully we'll see everybody in the flesh next week, next month. Take awesome. care. Bye, bye, everyone. Good night. Bye.